Hi guys, Harry here from the Art Gear Guide. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, <clears throat> I know this isn't a review, but I, a couple of days ago, I think it was, maybe about a week now, I put a sketch up, just like a, a watercolour sketch of a tree that I did. Um, I am terrible at watercolour trees. I've been watching so many tutorials over the, the, the last year or so, trying to get them right, trying to get them down and what have you. And... Um, I've watched a few people's techniques. I've tried to implement them into my own way of doing things. And a couple of people had said to us, oh, it'd be great to see you do that. Because I just put a photograph up of the, the finished result. So what I thought is I'll try and replicate it again. Now, so the techniques that I've picked up from other watercolour artists is that when you're doing something like a tree, um, it's best to use rough paper. So with watercolour paper, there's like three main types. You've got hot press, which is like a smooth uh, surface. A lot of colour pencil artists use that paper as well. Really good tough paper, takes lots of layers. But obviously watercolour artists use it as well. Then there is a cold press, which is a little bit more textured. Uh, sometimes it's referred to as not. And then you have rough. Now, this particular paper that I'm using is uh, the the Langton Prestige 100% cotton from Dealer Rowney. Um, I've got quite a few different watercolour papers that I've been trying over the years and stuff like that. The, this Langton Prestige... Um, 100% cotton um, you can see here down at the bottom it says uh, rough so just let you know gives you an idea of the the texture so anyway that's the paper that I'm using for this now the paper that you used in the sketch was from my etcher sketch book which was a hot press paper really nice paper but um, when you're trying to do trees, the reason why you use rough will become apparent as I'm going along. So if you look at the the camera here, I've got another camera set up where I'm used where you can see my colours. Now, again, when I did the sketch, I used different paints. The paints I used, I can't use in this video because it'll start a war. So, um... What I've done this time is I've mixed the three greens that I want. And basically what you are looking for is a light, a mid-tone, and a dark. If you look at this like this tree that I've sketched out. So I've got the trunk here and I've got a couple of main branches that I want to put in. And I've done them in kind of like clumps. Okay, So in my head I've got this. Because trees aren't just like one big thing. They're, they're, they're clumps. And if we have like the light coming from this direction here, um, then the green around the top here, around this side here, is going to be lighter because the sun's hitting it. Same with a little bit down here as well. And then as we start bringing it round, you've got your mid-tones. And then along the bottoms, like around here, uh, around here, under here, uh, around here, round the back a little bit on both of these. You, you've got like your, your darker greens. This is where the rough paper comes in because the rough paper allows you to leave little bits of light uh, in between these because we're doing, at the end of the day, we're just doing leaves. Uh, and so to try and replicate that, we uh, use a lot of watercolour artists when they're doing these types of when they're doing paintings will use wet on wet which is just wet the paper you put the colour in and it kind of it just disperses and it and it has a, a mind of its own to a certain extent when you use just like a dry technique you've got a little bit more control over it but you can get this like a uh, leaf technique that i'm going to try and show you here but like i said so these are the, the three greens that i've created now the colours that I've used, uh, sorry, the, the the paints that I've used to create these greens is, oh, just drop my thing, uh, Aurelian, which I really love. It's a really, uh, it's, it's like a bright, vibrant yellow, but it's it's got green, it's got a green tone to it. Uh, and as you can see here, this is the Windsor Newton Professional. 
I'll have some photographs of these up as, as well because I'm not showing them off very well. I've got cobalt blue and ultramarine blue, and then I've got uh, rose matter. So this light green, I've used the aurelian with a little bit of cobalt. Uh, the midtone green, I've used um, the aurelian cobalt. And a little bit of rose matter. The rose matter, or sometimes you can use uh, burnt sienna as well, is a nice colour that helps to kind of like calm greens down. If, if they look a little bit too blue or too viridian, for want of a better word. Uh, if you add like burnt sienna or, in this case here, rose matter, it just calms it down a little bit. Uh, and then for the darker blue, or sorry, darker green, I've used the aurelian the ultramarine blue this time or you could use Prussian blue or indigo if you wanted it really super dark and um, rose matter now I know a lot of watercolor artists proper watercolor artists which I'm not will tell you that if you're going to use a blue in the sky and stuff like that there you keep all your blues the same but this is like I say the, the sketch that I did I use different paints but I can't use them here so anyway let's get on with this So I'm just I'm I'm just gonna waken these up a little bit. Cause they've dried out slightly since since I, I mixed them. And as you can see I've used tubes as well which allows you to get a lot more consistency um, you don't want it you don't want it like too wet and I don't think I, by the looks of things I don't think I've made enough of my light green so anyway let, let's let's see how it goes in any case so I've loaded up the brush and then what, I want, what, what I'm going to do is, bearing in mind that my uh, light greens are at the top here and, uh, and along this side here. So I'm using the side of the brush and because of the rough textured paper, it should give me uh, this, this illusion of um, like leaves. So you can see here, I'm going over the uh, the lines you know you don't have to stay in the lines the lines are just a guide of where you're going to put things and what have you and you can see here already because I'm using the side of the brush I'm getting these like light areas so I need to load up my brush again not too much water don't forget I'm going to come down here I'm kind of going to start when I'm doing this I'm kind of starting in the middle a little bit because I want the brush to be really dry when we get to the edges I, I need it to be uh, you know like the, dry so that I can get these tiny little leaves loading up my brush again because there's going to be a little bit of light on the top here sorry I'm moving about there okay so now I don't really need to clean my brush as such so I'm now coming in with my mid-tone Again, I hope of, and it doesn't matter that all of this is wet. That's absolutely fine because this will just it'll help it actually. So again, I'm kind of starting off in the middle, letting letting the the watercolor do its thing. 
You can see little bits there splashing up. Again, that is no problem at all because that is going to help us uh, create this illusion. And don't worry about your mid tone, you know, your mid tone's going to pretty much cover the rest of the tree, which is fine because we're going to come back in with the the uh, the the really dark green in a bit and with because we the the paper will be a little bit wet not like as wet as it would be if you were doing wet on wet the the dark green when it gets in onto this is going to help with the effect so I'm just coming over here and Again, these little white bits that are left on the paper, not a problem because when we come in with um, you know, creating our, our leaves, so to speak, we can recreate those branches in between those little white bits so now i'm into my, my really dark area here okay so now i need to um try to be a little bit more mindful of where this is going so under here uh, i want it a little bit under here as well Uh, down around the bottom here just to help this and you can see it already it's, it's kind of starting to take take hold a little bit and then again starting off in the center Loading the brush up. see how it's kind of like playing out here a little bit you can put little you know, li little tiny bits of the darker color up in here because but just be careful not to go over the top with it because you want to make sure that you can see down down around here at the bottom Now I'm going to leave that dry just for a little bit um, and then I'm going to come back in again with the, the dark green and because it will have dried out slightly um, it, it should give me slightly e like even more darker tones it will not it will not fade out because don't forget the the darker green that we have put in here we have put it on top of the dampish uh, mid-tone green and then obviously a little bit of a light tone as well so i'm just letting that dry out okay 
so that has dried a little bit it's almost dry so I'm just going to come back in again with some more of this this darker green Should have done maybe actually I'm not sure if this will work now but we'll give it a go give it a whirl I'm just loading my brush up with just a tiny little bit of this um, Okay, so you, you get the general idea. You can play about with it and get it to the, the best, you know, the way you want. So I've added into uh, my palette here some raw sienna and some burnt umber because we're going to do the trunk now. But um, and before we do that, so. I've got a mixture of some raw sienna so don't forget the you know we've, st we've still got to work here with shadows and light and all the rest of it okay so uh, I'm still working with dry here so I want this side of the trunk to be light ish lighter anyway um i don't want to bring it right down to the bottom just yet because i learned a really good technique from a wonderful watercolor artist uh, called uh, oliver pyle who does landscape painting and if you watch him um you will learn a thing or two about uh, watercolor painting and stuff like that he's one of my favorite landscape artists so I don't want to bring it right down to the bottom just yet I'm only going to work on this part of the trunk um, so all I'm doing now is I'm just introducing some uh, burnt umber now Obviously, this is where there's going to be a lot of shadow because of the um, where the branch, the you know, the trees are and stuff like that. But we need we need there to still be like a little bit of contrast on these branches, a little bit of light and dark. So I'm keeping the darkest part of the branches under at the bottom and then just work it down here just drop it in little bits that'll dry off now I'm gonna come back in with this uh, 
burnt umber just to get these branches in especially up around here very dark because of where they are but this is where as I was saying to you earlier on the little white bits that have been left exposed by the paper you can put in a little bit of your own uh, branches just, just to give it that little extra thing Although it's although I need it dark up here. Uh, so just bring a little bit of the raw sienna, was it? Yeah, a little bit of the raw sienna on this particular branch and then just drop in a little bit of the burnt umber there just to mix it up a little bit I know they're small and what have you but just give it as much detail as you can um, So while while the the trunk is is drying off, I'm just what I'm, I'm just going to put in. just to help create this illusion really so again And it doesn't matter that your branches are broke up or anything like that. I think it makes it look a little bit more authentic. But but you don't want to go, I mean, like you don't want to go overboard. Now, we will come back onto this trunk a little bit later on and darken things out a bit. So don't worry about that. Again, just a few more little branches. say that's about it so that's the um, those little branches put in now here's here's the technique that well the tip really that uh, Oliver uh, pile 
mentioned on one of his tutorials. So he had, he, he said, and he was talking about like trees in the distance as well. He wasn't just talking about trees that are down here uh, in close. He was saying that, you know, at the end of the day, trees are growing out of the ground. And so when, when they come down and they meet the ground on your painting, you don't want you want it to look like it's just one continuous end so i've done a little bit of wet and wet just down here picked up a little bit of burnt umber here along with the, the burnt sienna and you can see there and and what he was what what oliver was basically saying is that it, it just looks like it's growing out of the ground really So with this little bit, I'm going to just, so all I want to do here is, is just create even though these little green flicks aren't really doing anything at the minute, that's absolutely fine because You want you want some of it to look faded and um, in the background, so to speak. And then what we can do is we can come back in again as that's drying. loader brush up with a little bit of the um a little bit of the the darker toned green and a little bit of the burnt umber just make sure that you make it look as random as you can And when you're doing these little bits here, you know, you don't want it to be too wet. And that's really about it guys just a few final touches here up around the top um, of the trunk just in with the the burnt umber again just to just to darken that down really Just to give, just to give it that little bit of contrast, you know, because this is where the the, the the most of the 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 shadow was going to be cast. And then just get all that off, dry the brush out a little bit, and then soften it up.
There you go, guys. And that that's really about it. Now, listen. This is, is it, this is not the only way that you can do a tree. It's not the best way you can do a tree or n none of that stuff. It's just um, what I've picked up from different artists, the likes of Oliver Pyle, um, uh, Charles Evans, um, Jeff Kersey, lo lo lots and lots of other um, amazing watercolour artists who I love watching. And, um, you know, you just pick up your own little tips and tricks. Now, the, the reason why, I, like like I say, the, the only reason I did this was because I did it as a sketch. And uh, somebody had said, oh, it, it would be nice if you could show us how that was done. And I just thought, as a five, as a little five, let me see if I can get this out here. As a little, like five or six minute video or however length of time this is taken my goodness 35 minutes um as a little quick video in between doing my um next patreon tutorial it'd be nice just to do something like this just throw it in there as a little tutorial and again don't forget if you wanted to um come back in with a, a darker green if you if you weren't happy with the the level of darkness in the in the darker parts of the tree if you're not happy with it again you know just wait until it dries out a little bit more and then go back in and um, add some darker bits it's it's up to you it's mainly what I just what I was showing you was the technique hold your brush like this Make sure you've got rough paper or at, at the very least cold press um, paper. Uh, if you can afford having 100% cotton paper, that's a bonus. If not, don't worry about it too much. But it's the technique. So just drag your brush along. Just skim along the top. And it's the texture of the paper that will do the work for you. Just add your colours, whatever you want to do. So in other words, if you were going to do an autumn tree, you would just have like three tones of like a, a, a deep brown, uh, a light yellow, and then like an orange color. So you'd have like a, a yellow as your light, uh, kind of like a burnt orange color for your mid-tone, and then a, a darker brown for your, your dark tone, and then you've got your autumn trees. So um, I hope this has been helpful for you, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you all again in the next review. Tell you what, I do think that I have kind of like got my mojo back, so to speak. My interest back. When I took that break off, I think it knocked me a little bit. I think the whole the whole thing knocked me. It just knocked my confidence. It knocked my interest. It knocked everything. And it's taken a little while for me to get it back. I've ordered uh, a few products a few new products to review i've been it's been really difficult to try and find products that i haven't already reviewed some of you have left some really good ideas of products that i haven't reviewed yet so i am going to get around to doing those as well so thank you very much for giving me dropping those little ideas uh, it really does help and um but but i'm starting to rebuild my interest and, and uh, and actually look forward to coming into the studio to do these videos again so i'm, I'm really glad that's come back because it, it did worry me for a while there when i had that whole meltdown thing about the review of the white knights watercolors um it, it just really knocked everything confidence interest um passion the whole lot of it just went uh it took a little bit while for it to come back I think that's why I had done all those videos and then deleted them. I just wasn't happy with them. Anyway, thank you so much, guys, for sticking with me, for all your encouragement and support. I've really appreciated it. Don't forget, the best way to support this channel, a lot of people are always asking, Harry, how can we support the channel? The best way and the, the, the cheapest way for you guys is just watching the videos, leaving a comment down below and hitting the like button. That really helps the channel out so much. I didn't realize how much it, you know, hit 
hitting that like button and leaving a comment helps the channel but it does it it gets it out to people more people the more comments and the more likes that the video is given uh the more youtube thinks that the the video is of interest to other people and so pushes it out to them so all of that really really helps the things that pop up in between the video that i know annoy the heck out of everybody they annoy me but that is the best way to help out a content creator financially by watching those um you know what i mean i can't say it on the video because i'm not allowed to but you, you know what i'm talking about for certain content creators the likes of lindsay frugal crafter and, uh, and like marty owens and a few others when i'm watching their videos i'll always watch those things that pop up in the middle uh because i know how it helps the content creator out it's only a couple of minutes and it costs nothing. Anyway, guys, your support is amazing. Thank you so much. And um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye. Don't forget, keep leaving all those uh, ideas down below if you want as well for different products for me to review. It really helps. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>